Okay. Hi, everyone. This meeting's been called to order the Public Art Committee. And um, first of all, let's see if there's any public comment on any agenda items. Is, are there any requests for public comment? Nope. Okay, great. Uh, I'll make my my chairperson's report very brief. I just want to thank Naomi and Shannon for keeping up with everything and say that now that things are starting to look a little bit more normal that the Public Art Committee will start meeting again on its own soon. Um, looking forward to hearing Naomi's update, which I'll turn it over to her for now. Great, thank you very much. Um, so we're just reviewing what we're going to be looking at in the coming joint meeting. Um, Kite Pharma will be bringing back their um, rotating sculpture exhibit proposal. As you may recall, every two years, um, that particular private developer location has committed to um, replacing their slate of sculptures with new sculptures. So they'll be bringing some works for you to take a look at. And then we'll follow that up with a budget update um, and review for the percent for art uh, account. Um, and then I believe we're going to be approving minutes. And that is, and then our manager update. Um, and we'll be covering the hall mural. We have a special report on that. Just today, we're finalizing our youth activity sheet. So I was hoping to be able to send it to you all today, but we had a few changes to the Spanish translation. So uh, we'll be getting that out to you very shortly. Sorry, Naomi, um, I, there was a little glitch. I couldn't quite hear what that was that, that you were referring oh, to. Oh, um, I was hoping to send everyone our youth activity sheet that we created under the Reclaim initiative. Um, but uh, it's back at the designers for a few tweaks, and I will be sending that to everybody as soon. And a few more updates from the manager. So Shannon will be talking about art of recovery and um, some, some other items. And I think that's it for me. Any questions on any of those upcoming items? <coughs> I hope to say this to the joint group, but I'll, I'll say it now. Um, because this is a review of Kite Pharma's rotating exhibit, some of the criteria that we normally apply to a single proposal from a developer is tweaked a little bit. Um, so um, mainly the, the budget requirement, um, their budget is spread out over, I think, 30 years. So um, you'll see a budget in here that doesn't reflect their entire requirement. Um, and because these are rotating, they're not meant to be permanent. Um, so some of the um, long-term maintenance, et cetera, same. And each time they come back, each time they come back with a, a rotating exhibit, um, they don't need to resubmit a covenant. There's only one covenant that covers the. So those are a few of the modifications. And Shannon, that's it for me. Yeah. Uh, and then I will um, just briefly, um, the boards and commissions, um, as things start to come back, the city council um, is coming back fully in person with no remote comment, public comment, uh, April 12th. And um, the state is starting to like kind of revert back with uh, regular laws about the Braun Act. And um, however, the city is looking at um, allowing boards and commissions they would like to. Um, I think for us, we would like to be back in person. Um, and so we'll be kind of evaluating that, whether our the meeting space that we used to use is available, so we may need to move around um, where we meet, um, not necessarily when we meet, but um, there's a chance that we will be back in person in June. 
for our next quarterly meeting. Um, so we will keep you um, informed about that and progress with that. But I think that it would be much better to be in person with you all uh, around a table versus in this weird kind of setup. So uh, I don't know if you all have feelings about that. Some, some commissions are preferring remote. Um, my sense with this group is that people prefer um, in person, but would love to hear any uh, feedback that you, you all have. Any uh, agree. Yeah, I would agree myself. Uh, I think that when it's a collaborative process, which I think the the Public Arts Committee is, um, I think that it's being able to sort of interact, see people's face, hear the tone of the voice, all of that kind of stuff. Sure, we can do it a little bit over Zoom, but it's, it's somehow very, the visceral quality is really missing. So uh, I would certainly be in favor of that. Yeah, I would agree with that. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think a lot of people are eager to get back. Okay. Michael Baroff, any comments on that? Um, yeah, as long as I can walk to where we're going, I'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to be with you in person. <laughs> we're going to start meeting in downtown LA. Great, the train. Okay, I can take the the expo. That's good. Yep. That was the other contingency, expo or walking. All right. Well, we'll let we'll keep you updated, um, but it's looking like a real possibility. So sounds great. Yeah. Okay. Um, in terms of new business, Naomi, you have something on art and sanitation facilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to give a little presentation um, to whet the appetite and set the stage for coming back in June when we're talking about future budget. So included in future budget will be City Yards project, which has been on hold uh, for a while and has come back in a modified state. So uh, a while ago, you had heard um, that there was gonna be an art opportunity at City Yards due to a very large um, renovation opportunity that was there. Um, due to the uh, pandemic, that project got significantly cut. So the um, at least the locations for opportunities um, is very different. Um, and we're still under, trying to understand what, in fact, is available. Um, so since I don't have details um, yet on City Yards, I just wanted to give a little presentation on the kinds of projects that we might be considering um, as we uh, create the scope for, an, for, this, um, for this spring and summer. So um, here it is, art and sanitation. <laughs> Next slide, please. Naomi, could you just briefly like talk about where City Yards is and what? Oh it yes, is? yes, absolutely. Um, so, so the City Yards complex is on Michigan Avenue, across from Bergamot, and it uh, is backs up to the recycling the dump center, and right by the freeway. Um, it's a fairly large parcel. I'm not sure exactly the size, but I'm going to be going over the site plan with the architecture soon. <clears throat> um, if you recall the very long uh, mural by Ava Cockcroft that was the accession, went all the way across Michigan, um, for, I think 280 feet frontage. And because of this project, the one of the things that remained in the project doing a cut through for a new driveway. So that's that's taken place. Um, and see, there's gonna, there is already a um, uh, bus washing and, um, and, and service uh, building that's been built. Um, and then some of the existing buildings are being turned around or, or moved, changed in their usage. Um, but generally the, Site is serving um, fleet services, water, uh, 
RRR, which is um, all the recycle and trash of the Florida folks. Um, the city's print shop, it's a uh, carpentry and, and paint studios. And um, I might be missing something, but mostly everybody's under the umbrella of public works. So that's a little background on the site, but we'll have more for you. So do we have any sense at all of of what we're looking at in terms of are we looking along Michigan Avenue? Are we looking for, I mean, I don't have a sense at all of yeah. what kind uh, of. Well, I believe that initially before the pandemic, um, there were plans to make the site quite a bit more public accessible. Um, but since the cuts, publicly accessible options are pretty small. Um, so we were looking at internal sites for placement of, of work, but since they may not be as public as we were hoping, um, there remain public, um, publicly accessible areas just on the frontage. And we're going to talk to Public Works about what else is, is um, viewable or accessible. Um, but in terms of, of putting uh, giant physical manifestations of artwork, it may not be the most um, salubrious <laughs> place. Um, well, so we're. I was going to say there's wonderful artists who actually make art out of recyclable materials, so that be. I have an interesting juxtaposition. Yeah, and also out of trash itself. I mean, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what it were. Yeah. yeah, so I wanted to give a little overview of the kinds of things that we've seen in across the country. Um, and they do kind of fall into a couple of different buckets. The first one being uh, an artist residency. So one of the very first Civic Embedded Artist Residence um, was uh, Merla Latterman Euclid, um, who since the 1970s has been basically started as an unofficial artist in residence Department of Sanitation um, and has been in residence ever since. Um, so she did an amazing manifesto in 1969 about basically about essential work and especially about the work of women to clean and maintain, make possible um, acts of creativity. Uh, so she she was doing, uh, she's been doing various interesting projects at the sanitation department and has also sort of broke ground for civic embedded residencies across the country. Our uh, opportunity is limited to a year. It needs to be done um, about mid 2023. So we couldn't do a very long-term um, residency, but it's one of the ideas is to have an artist who really embeds, like uh, Deborah Ashheim did at the fire department, um, really embeds in the life of city yards in one or more of the various divisions and um, uh, uses their creativity to change or um, enhance the way things work. So here's an example of the social mirror from 1983. Um, Merla uh, lined garbage trucks with mirrors so that as they went out into the community, people saw themselves and the trash trucks together, which I think is interesting. Um, next slide. Oh, I think, yeah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> um, this next one is uh, uh, just an example of artwork at a water treatment battle. It was a couple of different treatments, one on the front gate, as you can see in the inset, and a wall. Um, the wall reminded me a little bit of our Michigan Avenue. Next slide. And uh, Kim Ablis, um Los Angeles artist, smog collector. She um, set various items out on her stoop and collected smog uh, particles. And interesting environmental pieces. Next slide. Uh, 
And then um, materials, here's a material that actually eats smog by converting um, nit nitrogen um, into less harmful substances. And I've seen um, at least two examples of these kind of projects using two different kinds of smog eating paint. Next slide. I thought this was an interesting one. It really speaks about climate change. Um, it's been taken up by environmentalists as it goes across the world, although it was initially meant to be a critique on monuments. But these ice sculptures gradually melt and um, provide a little commentary on our warming world. Next slide. Here's another local piece. This is in Culver City. Um, a set of various treatments around a sanitation facility, including sculpture, applied uh, work on fencing, and um, uh, engagement work the artist did. Next. Uh, also in Seattle or the area, um, a water treatment facility that had um, in the front where people could see it. This is a rainwater catchment treatment. Next slide. This happened in 2016. Um, the Land Art Generator Initiative, which um, does paper projects around the globe, came to Santa Monica and put as its prompt uh, for folks to apply with projects that um, created art and infrastructure. And here's one of them, um, a purely um, theoretical project of, uh, for a desalinization plant that is also an artwork. So just the idea of functional artwork that might speak to some of the some of the processes that take place at City Arts. Next slide. Here we had the tool lending library. Um, this one is the one in Berkeley. Um, again, thinking about themes of work and maintenance um, and making these things available to the public at large. Um, a repair cafe. We, we did repair cafes for several years at the Camera Obscura. They were very popular, um, run by volunteers, and this was all about landfill um, diversion, so keeping items working and in people's homes. Next slide. Um, LA County has a um, civic embedded artist residency program. Uh, Strategic, no, uh, create a strategist program. Um, and they uh, placed artists in various county departments. This one is um, a, depart uh, a Vision Zero collaboration. The artist came and did work with the community science. Um, just an idea of how um, artists might be working hand in hand with um, departments, divisions. Next slide. This is back to the New York City um, Department of Sanitation. Um, sanitation workers um, started to get very into saving items from the trash, inspired by one of, the, one of their co-workers, Nelson Molina, basically created a museum in the sanitation department of all the things that he's rescued. Um, and it's a, a sort of hidden gem. Next slide. and also including sanitation workers in art uh, shows. This one, uh, I think this is an annual show, sanitation work. Invite them to create work and show it, showcasing the creativity of employees. And I think this next one is the last one. Um, I was just interested in um, City of LA as most as pretty recently put out an RFQ for um, artists for sanitation facilities. This is they're going to be actually putting together a pre-qualified roster. So it's a little different from what we're going to be doing. But um, I noticed it that in their RFQ they um, identified their sanitation goals or their clean water watershed solid resource goals. 
and conveyed that in the RFQ. So it's more of a reminder to, to us to put, it, put things like that in, in consideration when we talk to RRR and the water folks. And that's it. Thank you, Naomi. Um, yeah, Michael, you have a question? Question right, thought. Well, well, this comes to mind given the proximity to Bergamot. It, it certainly would be interesting to consider cross programming between the yards and Bergamot. I and mean, also, the city also has various ecological programs, fairs, or the such that maybe uh, Bergamot could maybe be also used of that. So, I'm just thinking about this. The, Across um, programming to attract more people, because obviously Pergamont attracts those of us in the, interested in arts, and then they can go across the street. <laughs> so, this oh, is yeah, definitely good. Definitely making things more public. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> on a, on that note of programmatic, um, is it okay if I jump in with a, a thought? This is Marty. Hey. Yeah, Marty. Oh, great. So, well, there are two. Um, children's books actually that come to mind that are wonderful for programmatic and just other inspiration. You know, you had mentioned one of the resources was a museum. And um, so one book is called Aunt Ippy's Museum of Junk. <laughs> and the other is called The Tin Forest. And it basically, that particular story is about a gentleman whose home is um, located proximal to within um, a, a junkyard and he basically every day starts to reimagine the the discards that are around him and just trans into transitions it into a really magical place made out of all of these found and you know um, sort of um, objects that were let go of let's say cast away so that just is a sweet a sweet connection if anybody has interest or that um, shines some inspiration. Thanks, Marnie. Um, Naomi, will you be giving that presentation to the Arts Commission as well? This was just for you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, well, it was it was good. Really appreciated that. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, look forward to hearing how this progresses. Well, I think the only comment I have is let's not sweep the trash under the rag. Rug. So, uh, rug. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I think this is like um, an introductory conversation around um, what we might do with the call for artists with this. We wanted to, Naomi wanted to give you some ideas of different things that have happened in different areas different cities and um, to really help us inform what this new call for artists is going to be uh, moving forward. So this will be coming back uh, to you once we've had a chance to work, uh, meet with public works and do a little more kind of uh, pre-work around what's, what's possible with this call for artists. But this will be the next big call for artists that we have. Yep. Thanks for keeping us in the loop at the uh, at the beginning formate, formative stages. It's it's great, and we look forward to seeing where we go from here. Yeah, it's an exciting opportunity, and I think one of the things is you've got your art audience at Bergamot, but you've also got a bunch of city workers that might not be in the arts world and not thinking of arts as relevant to them, and how we can use this opportunity to give our essential workers some opportunities to experience the arts in their day-to-day -day lives that would enhance enhance their 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 time working in Santa Monica, you know. Absolutely. And also great. an opportunity to uh, shine a light on what they're doing for the rest of the community to, you know, yep. to see. Sorry, was someone else wanting to say something? All right. Um, who's doing announcements and upcoming meetings? Shannon? <laughs> well, um, I already talked about the next meeting. It'll be in. Oh, I will say, and this is going to, I'm going to bring this up in our um, 
joint meeting as well. Um, the city has recently declared um, or designated two new city holidays. Uh, one is Cesar Chavez Day, which will be on this month, probably Monday. Um, the other is Juneteenth, which will be um, acknowledged or celebrated on the third Monday in June, which is when we would normally have our regular June meeting. So we're going to need to reschedule our June meeting, but we are planning to meet soon. And at that meeting, we will have um, uh, the 2022-23 public art budget coming before you. So it'll be another joint meeting. Hopefully it'll be in person. Um, and um, But it'll need to be a different day and time than June. All right, great. Thank you. So we're, how are we doing? We're doing well. Um, just about time to adjourn our public art committee meeting and move into our, our joint meeting, isn't it? Yes. And we have Michael Masucci here and Mary Elizabeth Michaels. We have a quorum of our pack now that Francois has joined us. Hi, Francois. Um, so we're just going to wait for our other Arts Commission members. Hi, Mary Elizabeth. I see you. And you can hear me too. I can hear you. Oh, Great. yeah. Hey, Mary Elizabeth. Hi, guys. So we'll just wait a minute or two and see, hopefully, that we have an Arts Commission quorum. Um, and, uh, and will be able to proceed with actionable items. Yes. <laughs> Hello, can you see me? Yes, Carl, welcome. Okay, thank you. Carl, so question. Um, sure. Will you and LaShawn um, be presenting? Yes. Hi, right, Michael, LaShawn is on. Um, I think Carl's going to do most of the talking, but yeah, yeah I'll do the talk. I'll do the uh, the uh, the um, the images. Okay, yes. but, I, yes. but I'll have the honor of, of introducing both of you. So, so welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're just going to wait have, on another minute or two. Um, hopefully, our we have Kathleen uh, Zadikian is ah, joined. Okay. Kathleen, do you want to unmute or turn your camera on so we can say hello? Uh, Shannon, can can you tell me there's a there's someone on the bottom with a phone number? Is that a commissioner? Because if so, I think we have a quorum. I think the nine one seven is Lashawn. Is that your, oh, okay. your number, Lashawn? All right. Sorry no, about it's that. not. No, I'm actually on my computer, so I'm not on my phone this time. Okay, because you're not showing up in the list, oddly, um, of participants. That's oh, right. Really? Yeah, very odd. Oh, well, maybe your son is in the Jonathan car. Hi, Jonathan. Um, got Pucci, Lori, Baroff, Michael, Kathleen. So we do have a quorum. Who is the 917 what? number? Can I unmute you? 
this Chalice, thank you Eric? For, yes, thank you for unmuting me. That's me. Okay. Okay, so we do have a quorum of both bodies. All now. right. Well, in that case, I'm going to formally begin uh, the meeting. This is a special joint meeting of the Arts Commission and the Public Art Committee. And uh, we're here to consider a uh, ongoing uh, process that happens every two years. But first, we're going to get a roll call of uh, the Arts Commission and the Public Art Committee. And then we will uh, begin with the presentation. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioners. This is Nathan Birnbaum. I'm the Administrator for Cultural Affairs. And we'll start by taking roll for the Public Art Committee. Um, committee Member Vaughn. Committee Member Subramanian. Yes. Committee Member Pugh. Yes. Committee Member Gittleman. Present. Committee Member Doherty. Committee Member Barr. I'm here. Committee Member Baroff. Here. And Committee Chair Yeya. Here. Great. And now for the uh, for the commission, Commissioner Zadikian, Commissioner Yeya, Commissioner Swimmer, Commissioner Subramanian. I think she's here, right? Uh, Deepa, you're here, right? Is that correct? I think she said I yes on the first Deepa, round. But Kathleen Zadikian is here, um, but we can't hear her. Uh, Kathleen, I'm going to try unmuting you. Well, I did hear network. Kathleen. I thought I heard. Oh, I see. I did. <laughs> That's right. I didn't hear. And 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 what about Deepa? I do not see Deepa. Oh, okay. I thought I heard a yes when I went through on the public art committee. I think it was I someone else. Okay. Um, Kathleen, can you hear us? Yes. No, Kathleen. Oh. Hmm. Now she's back. Back. There's Kathleen. Yeah. Yes, I see her. Okay. Um, Commissioner Michaels, I'll continue. Here. Commissioner Jackson. Commissioner Chalice. Here. Vice Chair Bar here. Baroff. Oh, here. hi, Eric. Thank you. Vice Very Chair here. Baroff and uh, Chair Masucci. I am here. Thank you very much. Well, thank you all. And um, as I began to say, uh, Santa Monica benefits greatly from a lot of the public art that's uh, brought to us actually by the private sector. And among the exemplars here is a, a site on 1800 Stewart, which is like a sculpture garden art walk um, managed by a Kite Pharma. And they have a, a rotating policy where every two years they replace the multiple sculptures that they've commissioned and presented and uh, curate a new body. And it is time for their latest um, set of works to be uh, presented to us for uh, joint approval um, consideration first by the Public Art Committee and then should Public Art Committee deem uh, the material ready to go on to us, um, then the Arts Commission would, would uh, consider a, a approval. We have um, two guests uh, representing um, Kite Pharma and uh, the curator. Um, we have LaShawn Parker from Kite, and we have uh, Curator Carl Berg, and they're going to give us a presentation on the works that they have selected. And um, I will turn it over to, to you guys, then welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, thank you. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen, and, and Carl, as you want me to proceed to the next page, just let me know. Okay, thank you. Share my screen now. All right, um, hopefully you can see my screen here. Again, um, along 1800 Stewart Street, we have a display of artwork, and uh, we're looking to replace the existing artwork with uh, new work. 
and um, I'll let Carl take take it on from here. Thank you. Oh yeah. So um, the um, every every couple years we uh, switch out the artwork and. Um, I was trying to, I mean, I did the last project and the project before, uh, and they have so kindly asked me to, to do, do it again this year. Um, and so basically I, uh, you know, try to select work that is diverse in, in many different ways, uh, from concept to appearance. Uh, we also have a nice group of, uh, artists who are, uh, diverse backgrounds uh several are not born here in america and are immigrants uh but for, first and foremost i think the work is is important and what they're doing and how it will uh, work within the site at at kite so um the list is there i think uh i don't know if you can see the whole list but uh, uh and i see that one of them uh it's a misspelling but uh uh david de michelle there's an uh, uh, an I after the M. Um, anyways, uh, so uh, let's go to the next uh, the next uh, image and the next one after that. Okay, so this is a proposal by China Adams, who is quite well established here in Los Angeles. Has shown at some really fine galleries and such, and he teaches at USC. Um, I chose her because uh to make to make a presentation of this project because she uh i think is a very interesting artist uh both you know in the way the work ends up looking but also conceptually i, I really like her presentation that she made for the project she had made another one before uh that i didn't think was quite as well and then she re remade this one and so basically what you're seeing is is a sculpture that by itself is uh, not the whole story. You uh, uh, you know you you read the Q QR code and then it goes to a video of a drone uh, flying over the ocean. And so I think uh, with today's technologies, you know, it's it's really cool to be able to integrate both uh, technical art and physical uh, art together. Uh, in a way that is interactive with the public. And uh, I think she's done a really great job of that. And I don't know if you have any questions or do you want to do those all at the end? Oh, you can I'm, continue. And if there are questions, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, okay. Then we're moving on to uh, the next artist. David DeMichel is a longtime veteran of the LA art scene. Uh, he's both known as a uh, painter, photographer, and sculptor. And uh, this particular piece is one of the pre-existing pieces in the exhibition. I think there's two or three of them. Um, it's an aluminum sculpture, uh, abstract. It's a very, very nice piece. It, it's quite tall, almost, I think, close to eight feet tall. Um, and it's uh, made in a very spontaneous process uh of sort of forming foam and then from that foam it's uh cast into a aluminum sculpture um he does a lot of installations uh that he are sort of miniature installations that he then uh photographs and they look like uh, uh fake galleries i mean they look very real uh most people think they're real and th this this sort of assembled uh piece he, it comes actually from one of those installations the concept of it where he's taken broken bits of plaster and made them into these fabulous installation in in his sort of uh, uh fake galleries that he then photographs and then the photograph ends up being the artwork but in this case he decided to take one of those miniature sculptures and then make them very large and so this is what uh what uh, he uh uh, has chosen and I picked to present for, for the project. So I, I think we can move on to the next one. And he, he's got it all figured out how to bolt it into the ground, as you can see here. And, you know, he's very experienced at these kind of things. So uh, it it's, uh, should be very nice in, in the spot that we've chosen for it. Um, so the next one is Ashley Hagen. This is one of the other... Uh, existing sculptures uh it is uh, actually works a lot with uh, 
things related to her her past and her uh, so she recreates like little uh, environments and if you can click through to the next image uh, so within the sculpture itself there's like little cubby holes that you can peek into and uh, they're often modeled after her childhood home I, uh, I think she grew up uh, in um, in Iowa and and so there's a uh, uh, kind of a uh, a nice sort of nostalgic feel to them. There was, uh, of course, the question of it being wood and, uh, and how would that last? And uh, the wood would be properly treated, you know, for outdoor uh, uh, purposes. And so, um, and uh, what we had, what we've had with, you know, wooden sculptures, we had one not in the current uh, iteration of, of the of the exhibition. We had one in the prior one, and from about uh, four or five years ago that was um that was wood and um you know in the end because these are uh two year um uh you know it only has to be up for two years it's it's it it, it will weather that time uh and if there's any sort of uh issues with with it not looking good she'll she'll come back in and fix it so in terms of uh you know if the paint cracks or something like that you know that that can always happen so we can move on to, yeah, here you see more of the little windows and here you can kind of see into the little cubby holes. And uh, it's really nice because it gives a chance of people to sort of kind of ponder the sculpture and sort of, you know, spend more time with it at a, at a close view as well as at a, more, a, a, a greater distance. Uh, Blue, Blue McWright is uh, has done quite a few uh, public sculptures. Uh, she's very, uh, very well known for her uh, sort of sculptures that are made with these kind of lacy feel, although it's metal and it will be made for outdoors. Uh, it does have kind of a lighter feel to it. Um, um, and uh, they're just really terrific works. Um, and uh, I think she lives... She might not live in Santa Monica, but I know she, she lives in the area, maybe in Venice. She has a studio close by. Uh, then we, moving on to uh, the next. Phyllis Green is a Santa Monica resident, and she has a really interesting sculpture here that is a combination of of uh, of uh, uh, astroturf and, and then the sculpture on top. Uh, and this is uh, reflected in uh, a concept that is, you know, let's read it from her own little note here. Uh, it's based on uh, a sculpture that she saw in Kansas City uh, replicating a, uh, a fiberglass Hereford bull uh, from 1953. And so she is sort of repurposing that with a uh, a, uh, a sheep, uh, and it's dealing with the idea of the sustainability uh, using uh, the sheep to to uh, to uh, munch away at at pl potential uh, places where there could be fires, and so to to keep the vegetation uh, uh, that it doesn't get overgrown. And uh, this is actually fairly common practice also in other countries where uh, um, the sheep can sort of naturally manage the, the hillside. And apparently in the, at the Getty, they, they have this, a flock of sheep for this exact purpose. So I thought that was really cool. And uh, uh, Phyllis is is very accomplished artist, has done quite a few public works uh, over the years. And uh, at some point, she could have even been on one of these commissions. I'm not sure, but uh, but she's she's a local known known uh, artist, and uh, uh, I think her work is terrific. And we move on to uh, Maz and Sammy, who who I've chosen to have two sculptures. Uh, they're cast resin. They'll be uh, be approximately uh, seven feet tall. Uh, the base being a foot tall. And th these are really gorgeous. Uh, you can't really tell. These are mock-ups because he hasn't made them yet, but he's done other things like this in the past. Uh, he uh, is an, has an interesting background. He, he's, he was born in Iran, 
I was schooled uh, in Madrid at the same art school as Picasso, Dali, and others. And he's incredible in terms of his his knowledge of mold making and etching and all these different processes. Um, and he, he gives us sort of a, 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 a nice kind of twist to, to the work. I think it's pretty, it looks pretty basic, you know, but when you see these kind of works up close, they, 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 uh, they just have a really beautiful surface and there'll be a, a nice at the enter point. So the one, the, the, the first uh, image of the sculpture at the site, that would be sort of the entry from uh, Bergamot Station, which I think it's always nice to have a nice bright sculpture there or something to draw people in from, from a distance because of course all the people go there to see the galleries and then they see like, oh, there's a sculpture there, then then that draws them in and then he were, would have uh, a second sculpture placed further into the, into the, uh, into the, uh, into the uh, site, but sort of halfway toward toward the front. Now Julio Sims is uh, another artist who has um, kind of more on the conceptual side. I, I place him similar to China Adams, and you know, so he has a really interesting concept of sort of having this turnstile within the 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 uh, the, uh, the the exhibit, and so uh, kind of uh, giving the sense of this sort of entry way or a way of bringing yourself into this exhibit uh, i guess it's sort of if it's in the middle it sort of pass gives you a passage between the middle and the, the front part and the back part uh, and uh, it i think it'll be also really kind of nice sometimes it's, uh, in, in an exhibit like this is always like one to have something that sort of questions the you know, is this a sculpture? Or what is this? And I think that's that's always very interesting in an exhibit to have something that sort of disrupts the flow of the other things, just to keep it kind of edgy and, and interesting. And uh, I, I, I and, and Julio has done a lot of uh, 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 public uh, sculpture. And uh, um, um, hold on one second, I have to grab something. Maybe. Sorry, I mean, have some family issues here to take care of. So, uh, anyways, uh, so um, okay, uh, moving on to Seenan Williams. Uh, Seenan Williams is a painter, sculptor, makes a lot of drawings, a lot of works on paper, and I really liked his idea uh, of like having a sculpture as a bench because the the play. Uh, I've been, you know, doing this project for quite a while, and, and it, it's an area where people do sit, sometimes eat their lunch uh, there. And I think the placement that he had in image number one, the top one on page two of two, that that's not going to work. But I think the one where it's sort of more inset, uh, I think that would be a really nice placement. Uh, also, again, it's uh, it's one of these things that uh, uh, both functions as a sculpture but also a bench and i, I kind of like that idea um uh you know as to have have something in there that's also functional and moving on to the last uh sculpture by hk zamani uh it's another uh interesting artist who uh, born in uh, iran uh immigrated to uh california when he was in high school and then ended up going to the Claremont Graduate School where he got his MFA in fine arts. And he's really known for uh, his performance art, his sculpture, uh, and also uh, his paintings, wall sculptures, all sorts of different things, very interesting artists. And so what we're seeing here is the newest series of works that he does that are based on um, uh, sort of figures. Sometimes they're uh, placed in front of canvases with sort of the reverse image on them. Very interesting uh, 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 works. Uh, the ones that he makes uh, for the gallery are tend to be make, made out of cardboard, but of course the, for this project will be something that will be more sturdy. In the, this case, this is uh, would be cut steel. And I think that's the last artist.
Yeah, that is the, the last artist. We just have our financial arrangements with our artists on the um, next pages. Oh yeah, so basically each artist uh, it has a budget of $7,500, $500 for install and deinstall of the sculptures, which we've done uh, put that in their court. So because uh, you know they're they're able to handle their own work, you know, and know what they need to do with it. And I have been there for every install to you know to just to make sure everything is done. And often they, they've hired also people, if they're not capable themselves of doing it, they've hired in a professional art uh, companies like sort of like an LA packing or one of those other companies that, that installs art professionally. I know several of the artists have done that in the past. And then, uh, and then the, uh, uh, so we start out by, you know, giving them a, a budget to, start the project and then as we go through it then they get uh different payments uh just to keep them uh keep them going on that and uh then uh five hundred dollars is held back until for the deinstall uh uh at the end of the project at the end of the two years and then we pay them that and then the the curator expense is listed there and the total expense is below there and I just put a summary here that we are required by our, a development agreement to switch out the artwork every 12 to 24 months. And uh, the last installation was in uh, Q3 of 2020. And we're hoping to um, install the new artwork uh, later this year. Thank you very much, uh, LaShawn and, and Carl. Uh, we'll open discussion. Are there any questions from either PAC or the Arts Commission? Yes, please go ahead. Me, Michael. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, Hello. Lo lovely work. Um, yeah, it's always a beautiful environment to see these sculptures there. Um, I guess this is the same question I think I ask every year is, I mean, the idea of um, for the public who walk through this to be able to learn about the work, intrigued by that first artist who had the little um, code there. Have you considered it for other arts or have you created pamphlets or I think we've talked about this any number of times, other ways so that the public can learn about the art in some way, but that those so many places are using these codes for people just to scan and look on their phone. I guess it links to a website or a document that you create. Seems pretty well, easy. Yeah, no, I, I, not doing? I think I haven't, but I think it's a great idea. I mean, that possibly could be included in the signage that 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 uh, I mean I could you know I don't know technically where it would have to be hosted and I would that would be obviously a kite pharma uh, thing I mean I I uh, you know to put something in a smallish website is pretty easy uh, I definitely could do that you know once the work has been installed photograph the work and then you know have the explanations that we're seeing here you know, in terms of the theme behind it and uh, the artist could write a little paragraph on that, and there could be maybe a link to their website. But that that wouldn't be that hard to do. I think it it would be just a matter of, you know, I could, you know, assemble all the images and such. But uh, I don't know what the legalities are and what website would have to host this in terms of the company and sure. their their. And I'm sure uh, Lashawn is going to have to ask some of the lawyers or stuff of Kite uh, to answer that as well. But it would be, I think, that would be the only thing of where we, we where would we host it, you know. Sure. Uh, and who who would be hosting it? And I think right. that, but I think it's a great idea. Yeah, it creates interactivity. I mean, I think that's a really so many places are using that now. So thanks for considering it. Just an idea. Thank you. Uh, this is Lori Yeah, and yeah, I think that's a good idea, Michael. I I support that. And another possibility to consider is whether Cultural Affairs could host it. I don't know the web, just the the website that could you know, with the explanations if, if it was needed. Um, to, to answer your question, I don't know if you were posing it at me, Lori, I think you might have been, but um, it uh, the city has transitioned to a new website and so hosting things that uh, limited than it was in the past. So I'm not sure that that would be possible, although it's something we can certainly look into. 
Thanks. Because may I ask, you know, Shan, do we post, you know, um, on the city site these percent for art projects? Is that kind of built into how we acknowledge that program within the city? Do we have visuals of other percent for art work? Uh, that's a really good uh, question. Um, we use the third-party system called the Prize to post percent for art programs. You're going uh, in and out. What's that? Yes, sorry, Shannon, you're breaking up, um, and, no. and very little of what you're hearing saying is being heard. Oh, sorry, I don't know. Um, is this better? No, you're back. Okay. Um, we we do use a third party system called Public Art Archive to host our public percent for art uh, collection. Um, we certainly could uh, put private percent for art pieces uh, up within that, and that's something that does allow a lot more flexibility uh, than our city's website. So that's something that Naomi and I could definitely discuss. That would be great, thank you. Great ideas. Any other thoughts, questions? I have a quick question. Um, I do triple second the, the idea, that's a great idea about the QR codes, Michael, fantastic. Um, this is just because I haven't been on the commission long enough to have gone through this iteration once before. Um, I'm just wondering really fast, and you can direct me, Sean, to someplace else, but I haven't heard of development agreements that um, allow for like a rotating gallery versus permanent installation of one or two pieces. Um, I would love to learn more about how that works. If somebody could just tell me if that exists under places or if other um, people in Santa Monica do that. I just, I'm fascinated by it and love it. I'll stop sharing. Um, well, for our end, for our specific facility, when we purchase that uh, land, uh, which actually we, we we have a ground lease with the city of Santa Monica. Okay. And um, as a result of that ground lease, uh, part of the transaction was that we had to agree to the development agreement that was in place with our previous, uh, with the previous uh, owner of the facility. And um, so there's certain guidelines that we have to go by. Uh, the artwork is just a portion of it. There's other um, outreach um, activities that we do with the city, um, with the um, with Santa Monica College. Uh, we have interns that come in that are residents of Santa Monica or attend um, Santa Monica College. So there's just a number of different um, uh, arrangements that we have to abide by on an annual basis. And we do provide a summary of our activities uh, as it relates to the community as well um, um, to, to one of the departments there at Santa Monica. But the artwork was one of the agreements. That's rotated. And Mary Elizabeth, um, okay. as, as LaShawn has, has said, this is a legacy project which uh, held over from the previous occupant, which I believe was a genus, a Jesus, it was a, another biotech. A Jensis, right. Yeah. And, um, and it has a very different kind of structure in that the, uh, the cost of the project was spread over many, many years instead of um, stipulated for one commissioned work. Um, I don't actually know of any other such um, agreements in uh, in Santa Monica. I, I'm probably wrong, but I, I don't know of any others. And this has been going on for quite a while. Um, and again, was was originated way before the tenure of any of us. So um, That's yeah, it, thank you. Yeah, I'm going to share that with other cities just because I think it it allows for a different kind of engagement with the art over a longer period of time. So interesting. Thanks again. Absolutely, and it and it you know it enfranchises many many more artists, and in many cases, if not all the cases, the art survives after the uh, exhibition and can be uh, shared elsewhere. I'm oh, another good existing art can be presented. It's a it's a great it's a great venue. Do we have well, this written up anywhere? Uh, there might there might be uh, a in some of the earlier documents. Uh, there may be some. Thing that that I could dig up. Um, I, 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 Sean might have something too, but there are some documents from the original Agensis. I didn't do the very first one with them. I think I did the second, or uh, uh, that Agensis did, or might even have been the third. Uh, okay. And th so um, I think it was the third. So I can try to dig up and see what what 
if I can find anything. And well, that'd be great. If it's not too much problem, I would love it. And you can share with Shannon. She can share with me. That would just be really fascinating to share with other people, um, even outside elected officials, to know about it for other cities. So, okay, I'm done. Thanks again. And so Mary, Mary Elizabeth, I would say that we probably have it within the development agreement. And a lot of these development agreements are like kind of negotiated one on one based on specific the developers. So um, we can certainly try to find the documentation. All that should be in our mind. Yeah, I can try to send it to you I have. Yeah, I do have the, a copy of the development agreement. So I can uh, pull out that portion and send it over to you. Thank you. All right, appreciate it, everybody. Thank you all. Um, any other Just discussion? A, yeah, quick comment. I, I can't figure out how to raise my hand on this thing, but the um, <laughs> Uh, just FYI the, uh, about putting these sculptures on the website, uh, you may or may not know that each one of them, or at least each one of those sites, is uh, a landmark in an online reality, uh, augmented reality game called Ingress. Um, now, what's kind of intriguing is that the, the game is not exactly super active at this point. I was just checking it, and all the pictures are on, of the sculptures that were there the past year or the year before, et cetera. But it's kind of a you know an interesting aspect of uh, of our augmented reality city that um, these are all registered as what's called portals. Uh, and there are two factions in this game, the resistance and the enlightened, who fight over them regularly and steal them from one another and all that stuff. I can send you some uh, pictures <laughs> and um, and, and uh, explanations if you're interested. Yeah, we can turn the sites into um virtual gaming sites. People be <laughs> running around looking for their pokies or whatever. I'm sorry. Oh, it is. I mean, basically, you need to be close enough to the portal, and in each case, in this case, each one of the the um, the sculptures, and then you can take uh, goodies from them. You can put weapons on them, and then you can link them together to create geometric shapes. It's like a game of Go, essentially, but it's virtual. It's um. It was, it was interesting. People played it a lot about 10 years ago, and it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit quieter. It, it was a bit, essentially replaced by Pokemon Go. It's the same company, same subsidiary of um, of Google. That's great. Why don't I uh, turn this over now to uh, Laurieia, who was the chair of Public Art, for their um, consideration, and uh, and then. Uh, when they make a decision, um, we will proceed. Okay, public art committees members. Um, anyone would anyone like to comment or say anything be as we consider this? I'd like to remind you that um, um, that our role in this is really to take a look at it. Um, as uh, from a bit of a of a of a meta distance, um, and just recognizing that that this is private percent for art, not public art. Um, okay. Well, I mean, Michael. Yeah, I mean, just acknowledge. Um, yeah, thank you, Carl. You do a wonderful job curating. You pick out a very interesting artist, and and you know, in, in enhance the environment and. Again, only thing is we would like to see more people enjoy it. That's the um, you know the end game, and some, however we play that out. So uh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, no, I think it's uh, that's great. We would love that. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with that, Michael. Carl, fabulous job. Really like the variety of work and and the quality of it and the placement of it. I think you did a terrific job. And Lashan. Great work. I'd be freezing a little bit. So my internet seems like you guys are going in and out. So I'm not sure if you asked me a question or not. I'm sorry. Just thank you for your work on this. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank and you. and I, I, I want to thank LaShawn as well, um, knowing that it's uh, this is sort of 100% my, my, my job. And I know it's not 100% her job. And she's been really great throughout the process. And being the, the, the link to pharma for me. And uh, it, it, it is a lot of work. Uh, just uh, Mary Elizabeth, Michaels, I just, uh, these projects uh, require a company to be really engaged because 
it's totally outside often their ballpark and you have to work closely, you know, because there's so many artists, so many, every, it changes over and all of this. Uh, uh, so whoever decides to do it needs to understand that when they do it, it it's going to require more work than buying one sculpture and just leaving it there. I, was thinking that it's not, it, I guess it's not just like, you know, time or money. It's definitely a lot more engagement and a lot more work. But yes, thank you for pointing and, that out. And, but but sure. because, because of all that, I think it makes it a lot more interesting. Agreed. Anyone One else? of the things we did different too this year is we, we engaged our staff facility and we we're losing you, Lashawn. On the army. I, I think what what uh, she was saying because uh, I I know uh, that the that the company also sort of uh, uh, different people at the company kind of voted on a bit on like which ones they liked and which and things like that. So it was really a, a nice process to go through uh, some participation on their end. Uh, of, of, a great idea. Yeah. Any other? Motion? I was just uh, making sure we had all of our comments. Sorry. And if no other comments, would anyone like to make a motion? to approve, to recommend that the Arts Commission approve this proposal. Michael Baroff. Oh. So moved. You did, Michael. Second. This is Marnie, I move. Marnie. Yes. I move to make the exhibition. <laughs> No, you move to recommend to the Arts Commission that the rec to recommend that the Arts Commission approves this proposal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Do we have a second? Oh. M Michael Baroff seconds. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All in favor? Do we do we need to take I think we need to call we I think we need to do roll, roll call. Roll, roll call pretty quickly. Um uh, first of all, the, uh, are we still, um, the um, members Vaughn, Subramanian, and, and Darty are still not present, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so um, for the voting, um, PAC member Pew. You have your microphone off. Uh, he's Wait. muted, he's muted. I'll come back to him. Um, Member Gittleman? Here he is. He's on now. Okay. Gwen, we're voting um, on the motion to recommend to the Arts Commission that they approve the updated artwork for the Kite Pharma site. Do you vote yes or no? Or abstain? Still can't hear you, Gwen. We'll come back to you. Can he put it in chat? Um, if his uh, microphone yep, isn't working. That's fine. Nathan, do you want to move on from Gwen? Come I'm back? happy to come back to Gwen. Marnie, did you uh, vote? I vote yes. Committee member Barr? Yes. Committee member Baroff? Yes. Chair Yeya? Yes. Um, and then Gwen is going to vote in the um, that's four four yeses that that um, carries the motion carries I presume is that correct, Lori? Okay. 
Yeah, the motion carries. Thank you all. Sorry we couldn't hear your voice, Gwen, Commissioner Pugh. Oh, not Commissioner, <laughs> committee member. Um, and sorry. The motion motion cast carries. Yeah, motion carries. And so now that the uh, Public Art Committee has approved, um, it will go to the Arts Commission. So the Public Art Committee has formally uh, recommended that the Arts Commission approve the uh, curated proposal by Kite Pharma. Um, and now the Arts Commission is, uh, uh, any questions, discussions before? Um... Go ahead, please. And please speak up because I can't see everybody. So just. Speak. Okay, I don't know if, if um, it's just my transmission, but uh, the sound that was happening was basically inaudible. So I don't, I don't know who spoke or what was said. I, I deeply apologize. Hope other people are, can hear. It may have been background noise. Can you hear me though? Yes, we can hear you. I, everybody okay. have a hard time. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, any discussion, thoughts, or does anyone wish to make a motion based on what the public art committee is recommending to us? Um, I move to accept the public art committee's recommendation that we accept Kite Pharma's proposal for this latest, including these latest art, uh, artists for their presentation. Thank you, Mary Elizabeth. Is there a second? Um, Is Laurie, would, did you just second? I'll second. Okay. So we have um, a motion on the table uh, brought forth by Mary Elizabeth and seconded by Laurie to accept the um, recommendation of the Public Art Committee to approve the latest round of curated sculptures to be put at 1800 Stewart uh, uh, in their Art Walk Sculpture Garden uh, as part of their ongoing uh, rotating presentation. Um, can we now get a, a vote of the um, present commissioners? Yes, um, Commissioner Zadikian. Um, yes. Commissioner Yeya. Yes. Um, Commissioner Swimmer and Subramanian are still not with us. Commissioner Michaels? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Chalice? Yes. Commissioner Barra, Vice Chair? Yes. And Chair Masucci? Uh, yes. Congratulations, Kite Pharma and Carl. Uh, unanimous approval of um, your continued excellent work. Uh, congratulations to all involved and to the artists in your show. Thank you so much for your presentation and for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so very much. much. Thank you. Have a good one, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, we're now going to move. Uh, Naomi is going to give a, an update on uh, the public percentage for the art. Um, here in Santa Monica. This is not an actionable item. It's just uh, information for us, uh, uh, possible discussion, but, um, but no vote will be needed. And uh, please take it away, Naomi. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Shannon is going to uh, help me out with a little bit of um, slide show magic. Um, this is our second of two parts viewing the last two fiscal years. come back to you in June with the actual budget. So um, this, uh, in November, uh, we talked about our conservation um, account, our conservation fund. Now we're going to be talking about percent for art, which is our. Um, <clears throat> so because of the pandemic um, <clears throat> disruptions, we um, haven't been able to get to your get a, a budget for each year to you. So I apologize for that, but we back on track in June. Um, we are uh, including budgets um, for projects that are complete and projects that are still in motion. So some things are 
weeks than others. Also note that in past years, we had instituted a system that reserved a project allocation, uh, administration and support, and towards um, collection care from each project. Um, but we found that that was a little unwieldy. Um, so we've um, reverted to actually creating, um, using each uh, project's funds for collection care, installation, et cetera. So tracking project by project rather than pulling it into a separate pool and talking about it that way. So um, our first project um, we're gonna talk about is Fire Station One. I think um, everybody's heard a lot about, oh, sorry. <laughs> Looks like my slides are a little mixed up, but um, uh, Shannon, can you go? Yeah, there we go. Um, so I think everybody is familiar with the backstory by Deborah Ashheim. The fabrication contract was approved uh, in March of 2018, um, and uh, glass was delivered and installed in April of 2020. Um, Deborah also distributed the backstory book to around 200 members uh, and uh, to everybody on the. Uh, mission and the committee. Um, so I hope you had a chance to take a look at that and enjoy. Um, from that project allocation, there was actually a little bit under $7,000 remaining, and that will indeed go into sort of a pool for general collection care for the future. Um, next is Light Paintings 2. If you can back up one slide, Shannon. This is uh, Light Paintings 2 by uh, Narduli Studio, Susan Narduli. Um, this is uh, one of two pieces that comprise light paintings. Um, so we'll talk a little bit um, about light paintings one, but just to note that light paintings two was um, projected to be installed in spring 2020, and indeed um, it was installed uh, just about the same time as Backstory. Um, this is a set of 85 digitally painted glass fins set in the dividing wall behind the permit counter. Um, and um, the biophilia uh, theme is reflected in this sunset to sunrise look. Um, then for Light Paintings 01, which I don't have a picture for, I want to note that the uh, south stairwell of the facility found to have some construction issues and also uh, some safety review issues that have significantly delayed that project. So did not go in at the same time as two did, um, but we are really um, anticipating, hoping, and crossing our fingers that we should be able to install this in, in this summer, um, probably just over to the next fiscal year. Uh, next is Lives That Bind. Um, so we reviewed this before, but um, just to look back, uh, this originated in the Arts Commission Directive in November of 2018 as part of that five-point plan to address the inequities expressed in the city hall. And goals for this project were to expand the representation of artists of color in the art bank hall, um, and also to create a display in the lobby of City Hall Annex um, that could in some way provide a counterpoint to the visitor experience in history. So five new artworks were purchased, um, and they were joined to pieces that were already in the collection and installed in summer, August 2020. And if you haven't already taken a look at that website, we have um, some great video. For you. Next slide. Next, we have uh, Belmar History and Art. Um, Belmar History and Art began in August of 2018 with that percent for art allocation, Civic Center multi purpose. And um, it started at a certain smaller amount, but once we understood the Coastal Commission's special condition meant to acknowledge the history of the site, um, that commitment was increased and supplemented by a very generous enhancement from the Public Works Department, um, and that enabled the project to expand significant permanent elements that would not have been possible otherwise. So it is now substantially complete. However, we are still working on that website uh, due to that website transition edits that we have to do, and there's some educational elements that we're still working on. Getting out. 
Can I ask a question? Yes. Yeah, when I look at it, yeah, I know it's substantial. It was like a half a million dollars from Public Works, correct? Yeah. Yes. Did you give, oh, give a sense, yeah, yeah, a sense of how that funding was chunked? You know, you know, this big picture, how that funding was chunked for the various aspects of this project? That's a nice chunk of change. It is a nice chunk of change. The um, bulk of that was for fabrication and installation of the massive, which was about 300,000. Um, next slide. Yeah, thank you. Oh, sorry. No, oh, thank you. I, I figured it was for the fabrication. That's great. Uh, next is our um, our reframe initiative. Next project or current project, the City Hall mural. Um, so again, in um, fiscal year eighteen nineteen, there was that five point plan, um, and at that point. Um, some PFA funds were allocated, um, but what, the whole project was put on hold due to Belmar and has now resumed. Um, and it will be our primary public art priority alongside um, city yards. Um, I think Shannon may present or will just mention the uh, extra report that you got that was um, specifically a reframe um, retrospective. So I won't cover that, but um, there are some recent directives that pivoted this project and Public Works is no longer covering the murals. We're now working on a youth activity sheet that will end up with a lobby display, um, which I think uh, we think is gonna be a really positive continuation of the engagement portion of this project. Um, and next, I think we have, oh yes, administrative and support services. So those include uh, honoraria, framing, installation of art bank works, documentation. And in this, uh, this slide, we show one of our pilot projects, which was also funded in administrative and support. Um, so we were able to um, do an interdepartmental collaboration with the Office of Sustainability on these new EV charging uh, stations. We got a um, sort of jumbo um, utility box project going. Um, so those are uh, viewable around um, Barnard Way, right on the on the beach there by the parking lot. How many of, there are, of those are there? Um, this was the only interdepartmental partnerships um, that we've done in the last few years. Um, this took place um, this early 2020. Um, and you can see that there's kind of two large um, utility boxes that right. these are supplying the EV chargers. The next slide is also about a pilot, um, more of a pilot. Um, and that, oh, do I not have it? Shoot. There's nothing in between. OK, well, I was going to say that uh, we piloted a K-Rail project with the artist um, Sunny Ellis um, on Main Street. And that turned out so well that we were able to use that as a sort of jumping off point for a lot of the art of recovery projects that came out. That was um, enabled by administrative. Um, and then uh, many documentation projects included, and now next slide, getting extra photographs taken, um, more current photographs taken of many of the items in our collection so that we could um, enhance our public. Um, also documentation, um, the artist Manfred Muller, whose work um, Twilight and Yearning um, was deaccessioned last year, is now working on a document um, documentary, um, as noted before, um, about the work. And um, <clears throat> we're also talking to the family of the artist Gilbert Lujan, um, whose work Another Magical Sunset Santa Monica Beach was also deaccessioned at the same time. Um, that is um, parking structure three, which is being demolished. We were able to get some nice video of the site um, before the fencing went up. And we hope to incorporate some interviews with the family members who have created a, uh, an archive of uh, Wuhan's work. Uh, so we hope to have some video that supplement our public art archive page of accession work. Uh, and lastly, for documentation, uh, the uh, 
CNG, LNG, which is a natural gas fueling station at the corner of Olympic and Fifth, um, is going to be fenced in, uh, unfortunately, part of an upcoming public works project. And this is going to reduce the accessibility to that work by Richard Wyatt Jr. Um, so we went in there and did some uh, close-up documentation so that we could enhance the public art archive digital experience folks who won't be able to get it right up and personal to that work. Next is collections care and management. And that encompasses uh, consultants for the collection, uh, especially for the deaccession, uh, appraisals, and for collections care, public art archive transition uh, consults. Um, and other documentation removals and storage and care. So we had an RFQ that resulted in the contract with Lewis Fine Art, um, and um, Ms. Lewis helped us put that transition to Public Art, Art Archive, um, transferring a ton of information on um, what turned out to be over 450 um, records that really ballooned from the 300 that, that she went in thinking we had. Um, a lot of those, of course, are temporary works or that are no longer in the collection, um, but still needed to be documented. Um, and additional services, we consolidated multiple offsite city offices, and that, in, that uh, led to many bank works being consolidated, stored, or transferred over to City Hall, installed in various facilities. Um, a little bit of consultation from um, Leslie Elwood filling in when this when my um, position was empty. Um, and that is it for my slideshow and pretty much everything narrative. I welcome your questions. Thank you, Naomi. Uh, questions, comments? No, thank you very much. Uh, quite a quite an array of uh, projects. Everyone everyone involved deserves to be proud. Congratulations, all. And and just so, to if I could, Michael, very quickly, um, just to set this up. So this was us getting you last meeting and this meeting up to speed on this budget. And at the next meeting, we will be presenting to you the FY 22-23 budget for your discussion and approval. Um, so it's been a while since you've done this. Um, we have new uh, commission members since the, that have probably never done this before. So this was kind of bringing you up to speed on where we're at to date. And um, so we can kind of reboot and get started fresh uh, for the next very good, thank you, Shannon. Um, moving on, uh, we're going to, for the Arts Commission members, oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Somebody speaking? No, okay. Um, there was approval of two separate documents, meetings um, in November, November 15th of uh, 21, one in which we considered the Red Car uh, Labas um, project on Euclid, and the other in which uh, we considered the uh, reduction of the commission um, membership from 13 to 11. So um, anyone who was present in the November 15 meeting who wishes uh, comment, critique, or if not, um, to motion to approve. And there's there's two sets of minutes. There's the joint meeting that we need to move first, and then the special arts commission meeting. Second. Right. The the first one is the uh, the red car Labas uh, Euclid Air, um, Avenue project. Are, are we we're looking at the um, joint the minutes? Yes. Are we looking yes. The joint one. Correct. Uh huh. There was one November fifteenth. Mary Elizabeth, do you have uh, an amendment? 
I do have an amendment for the one that's the commission. Are we starting with the one that's the committee first or? Oh, the the joint point? one, yes, first, yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll pipe in for the next one that's, that's right. the commission. Right. Certainly. Thank No one wants to move these minutes? Um, I, I certainly will move. Um, I'll move to uh, approve the minutes for the joint meeting. Is there I'll a second? second. Okay. Um, so we have a, a motion and a second. Uh, I'm sorry, who was the second, please? Uh, Mary no, Elizabeth. I was there. Thank you. She wasn't there. I can't second that. Okay. <laughs> I'll Sorry. second it just, just to move it along. All right. <laughs> so Michael Baroff is the yeah. second. Um, those who were there, Arts Commission members, um, in favor, we can do this by uh, by voice. Aye. Aye. Any nays? <laughs> All right. The joint committee uh, minutes have by our commission. Okay. Now, um, Mary Elizabeth, you had um, notes yeah, uh, Kathleen, for the. Oh, I'm sorry, Kathleen. Go ahead. <coughs> we need someone to turn off their mic. Kathleen, anyway, trying to say something. I uh, she her hand was up, but maybe she was voting. Okay. Was, um. Oh, so go I, ahead, Mary I, Elizabeth. I, I couldn't second because I was having technical challenges so that I missed the first 15 minutes of the other meeting. And so I'm updating the commission minutes to make a change that noted that I wasn't there on the roll call and I actually was, I, there was technical difficulty. So I was present for the entire commission meeting. I would like it so reflected in the minutes, please. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I got that amendment. Thanks, Mary Elizabeth. Thanks, David. So, um, Okay, Kathleen, I got you. Um, we haven't been able to hear you. We hear some kind of static noise that might be coming from you. But um, yeah, tonight's been a lot of tech issues, which is why I think we're all going to be very happy to be in person next time. Um, but um, but but thank you for being here, Kathleen. Sorry, the tech issues have been you know restricting you. Um, but we see you. Yes. So um, with uh, Mary Elizabeth's um, correction, um, anyone wish to approve the the AC meeting um, minutes? I'll move to approve them. Um, moved by Laurie. Second. Second. Uh, Kathleen seconded. <laughs> um, okay. So um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All right. The uh, minutes have been approved unanimously. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to say one thing. Here's there. Eric. <laughs> Go ahead, Glory. This, this is very minor, but there was a typo in one of them, and I'm sorry I was shuffling. I thought I was on mute, and I wasn't. Um, oh, but no. I, <laughs> but uh, that, that wasn't the part with the dishes slamming. But uh, <laughs> no, that wasn't me. <laughs> but anyway, um, there's a typo in one of them which is not, you know, we can still approve them and everything, but if anyone wants to fix that, it's in Chair Masucci, it says Chari instead of Chair. So you might. <laughs> That's me, Charlie. Uh, that, I, thank, thank you. Thank you, we'll correct it. <laughs> All right. Um, we're, we're now gonna segue into, um, for the remainder of what would be more like a traditional Arts Commission um, meeting and, um, I'd like to first begin by saying um, I'm still here. So um, as you know, um, I officially termed out last June and I had requested um, to uh, get another term. And um, it, you know, it's, it's, we've been through a crisis and the city council has got a lot to do. And they finally um, got around to voting earlier this month. So I am, I'm, I'm going to be here for a while. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that I can remain as, as chair. We'll need to figure out, one, whether you would want that, or two, whether um, that is even an option, because there are now 
um, guidelines having to do with the with term limits. Um, uh, it has been a strange um, tenure as chair since my entire tenure as chair has been during COVID, which means we've only been meeting a few times. Um, but um, I'm, I'm grateful to, uh, to still be here and honored to be working with you all. Um, one thing I would like to do um, in, in my time as chair is to really reflect on the subcommittees and the ad hocs. Um, I, I, I would hope that everybody would be on at least one subcommittee, and, and I'm, I'm going to encourage you to um, get more involved. And, and um, certainly what I'd like um, on the agenda for a small part of the next meeting will be um, a robust discussion on subcommittee memberships and, um, and the opportunities for uh, making them even even more effective than than they are um but um but thank you for uh for putting up with uh me and putting up with uh each other during this crisis it's been uh and each other i mainly mean technically you know um as we glitch in and out um i'm pretty big on tech as you may know but i i certainly don't think we're quite ready to replace the uh the human condition with a staring at a bunch of screens. So I, I look forward to seeing you all next time in person. Um, and with that, I'm going to switch it back to Lori for her um, Public Art Committee report. Oh, hi, everyone. Um, much of what the Public Art Committee has done, we did together today. <laughs> um, the only other thing really was that um, we did get a, a Presentation from Naomi on um, on some ideas for public art at the city yards uh, sanitation project. It's called, and this is a very preliminary state. They're working out now uh, what they'll be looking for, what they'll be putting out there to artists. So we'll be back to you when you know with that um, when it moves along a little bit. Otherwise, um, you know, it's also been COVID, so we haven't met other than the last uh, couple joint meetings. So not much else to say. Look forward to meeting in person. Thank you, Lori. Um, the Bergamont Ad Hoc Group has been meeting um, somewhat frequently um, in, in the last months, and um, and it's been a a busy time of change at Bergamont, as as you probably know, um, a while back the Worth Group, which was the management company contracted by the city to um, to run the Bergamont uh, infrastructure, um, had decided not to request um, an extension of their contract or a new contract, and um, and bowed out. And um, after uh, a search by uh, the city, of which Shannon was on that that um, committee, um, Redcar, which is actually the management and ownership group um, on the private part of Bergamont, was um, selected to be contracted to be the management team. And that has many, many synergistic advantages. As, as you know, Bergamont, what we call Bergamont, is legally two properties, one run by the city and one privately owned, formerly by Wayne Blank, um, he sold it to a consortium of which Red Car is the sort of the over, overseer, and they have been very effectively um, managing their part of the Bergamont um, properties all throughout this um, crisis and, and, and transition. Um, with with Worth bowing out and Red Car taking over, it's going to be a much more streamlined and hopefully integrated. Bergamont Station once again, and, and um, I, I think there's good good reasons for optimism. Um, other, other good news is um, Bergamont uh, is 100% leased. There were a few vacancies, but that um, is uh, no longer taking no longer the case. Um, the subcommittee was was part of the um, approval of um, two two new tenants, two quite different from each other. One is a a comedy ensemble called The Crow, which uh, promises to do some very um, interesting site-specific uh, 
um, activations um, in their space and hopefully, um, you know, expanding out into outside the space. And then the other is, is a, a project called Green Bus, which is um, spearheaded by an interesting gentleman named Richard Lovett. And um, Richard Lovett is a sort of a titan in the mainstream entertainment industry. He's the president of CAA, um, arguably the most powerful um, theatrical and uh, talent agent in, in, in Hollywood. And um, he's uh, quite an aficionado quite an aficionado and, and collector of um, vernacular photography in addition to fine art photography. And, um, and he proposed creating a space in Bergamont which would be part um, sort of mini museum in which um, highly curated um, presentations of both, uh, again, you know, high art work and this um, new recognition of vernacular populist um, photography could be presented. And then um, both the Crow and Green Bus promised to be um, very exciting additions to the uh, ecosystem and landscape that is Bergamont. So we're, um, we're, we're pretty happy about that. There have been, since Red Car took over, there have been meetings with um, representatives of Red Car and um, cultural affairs with the gallerists and the um, and the the leases at Bergamont and and the beginnings of a hopefully very positive um you know relationship will happen and there will there will be a future meeting um, with the uh, the tenants and uh, and and Shannon most likely and uh, representatives of a uh, of the Berg ad hoc um, soon and um, going forward as you also know um, there are there are new recommendations and well requirements for Bergamon to um, transform part of its of its space into um, into housing. Hopefully, some will be low cost artist housing. Bergamon will still very much be an art center. That's not going to go away, but it will be expanded to include housing down the road, and a, and a process will begin to try to imagine what that's going to be and contemplate it and, um, and you'll certainly be hearing lots about that in, in the certainly years, um, more than months um, ahead. Uh, so that's, that's what's going on at Bergamon, good time for a lot of change. And, um, and then, uh, go I ahead, Laura. Oh, just, just on, on the housing and hopefully that will include affordable housing for artists, which we need so desperately. And yes, so uh, yeah, I, I, I did briefly mention that. Um, yeah. That's the hope. Um, I, I think there's a, a strong case that can be made and, and probably with a bit of lobbying and a little bit of um, uh, public outreach, um, we can get the community behind that as well. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I also wanted to say I've had several people um, mention to me uh, recently how excited they are uh, about the quality of uh, photography galleries at Bergamon. We've, we seem to be developing a niche in that area and being recognized for that, so. Yeah, there's no question. There's a, a really strong presence. You're right, Laurie, and it's, you know, there, there's some real world-class work that can be seen there on a, on a routine basis, and that's, a, that's just, you know, great for Santa Monica, you know. But, but yeah, I, I agree with you. Thank, thank you. Any other comments? Yes, please, Kathleen. Um, do you hear me? This yes, we do. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Yay. Um, well, when you were talking about the possibility of, of artist housing, um, is there included, I don't know if there would be a live work situation, but is there any possibility of day use art studios connected with that or and or live work situation? Well, I, mean, I, I don't want to venture an answer. My guess is that's not really what what is being proposed. I don't know that anything is per se off the table, but I don't think that's, that's certainly not the discussions I've heard. Now, I'm certainly, I'm, I'm not in the inner circle by any means of the information. Shannon probably has more more insights into that, but I, my guess is that's, you know, the, the live work thing, the space is hopefully big enough people could do that, but they're certainly not going to um, in, intrude into the, the, already assigned um, gallery spaces. That's my guess, but, but Shannon it may, may correct me. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I think that we're kind of in a new moment with this site. We're kind of starting from scratch in some ways. We're not, but we are, um, given the requirements of the, the space moving forward. So I think I wouldn't want to put it, take anything off the table as a possibility. And I've definitely mentioned live work um, as something if we get affordable housing. I think there's a lot of challenges with that that would need to be worked but I think that now is the moment to kind of re, you know, rethink what this might be uh, and what we might want to push for. Yeah, that sounds right. That sounds right. Thank you. Right. I mean, isn't the whole issue about the housing based on the state's housing element requiring the city of Santa Monica to develop more housing and their expectations are beyond the city's capacity, so the city's being pressed to create as much housing as possible, which may imply the challenge between just pure workspaces versus living spaces. So just a consideration given the context of why they're building, why it's even happening at all. Yeah. 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 So I, I guess the official answer is we don't know, you know, but, but I, I think it would be you know, not a easy lift, but you know, as Shannon said, it's not off the table, but I don't think that's what the envisionment is at the moment, but I could be wrong. And with that, I am gonna turn it over to Shannon, who has a lot to say. There's a lot of things going on and, um, and thank you. Um, and I'll be quick. Uh, I know we're a little over time that what we anticipated. Um, so for my manager's report, just a couple of things. We've had a lot of um, activity on the city home mural project. Um, you received an update from me uh, or an updated report on all that had happened. Um, city council has gotten involved with this. This was, as Naomi mentioned earlier, enacted in 2018, it was on hold. Um, because of Belmar, we started moving again once Belmar was complete. And then um, city council members started making actions about um, covering it, forming ad hoc committees. And then that created a whole other kind of um, circle of work uh, that had to happen around how we were gonna process this moving forward. So after a lot of work, we're back, I think, with momentum moving forward. And um, you can read it in the report. The covering of the mural is no longer happening. And instead, we're doing an activity sheet for you, so it's kind of a poster contest that will go up into the lobby of City Hall. And the goal will be that this um, lobby area can become like a living um, evolution of this project and what happens with the community engagement pieces of it. Um, and so we, have the activity sheet. We have a, a survey that's linked to in the report that uh, you were got you received it sent you as well. Um, it's really kind of a broad um, survey into what it means to representation of space and what stories are shown, what stories are not shown. Can you all hear me? I'm seeing frozen people. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, and so, you know, we're really taking this as an opportunity to build on what we did in Belmar to create a more global program around the role of art in civic representation. And the mural is gonna be the next project in this program, but we see this as a continuing program. We know there are a lot of histories that we wanna uncover and really surface and highlight um, as we move forward. And so we have the um, activity sheet, we have the survey, and we currently have an RFP out for a consultant to kind of shepherd this effort moving forward and hope to have the consultant um, or consultant team uh, identified and working to go into contracts in the next year. So things are moving forward. Um, we have our city hall mural subcommittee of the Arts Commission that's been meeting regularly for the past few months. Um, to help guide this effort. We also have the city council ad hoc subcommittee 
Expert Working Group, and we have a Landmarks Commission Working Group as well, although the um, Arts Commission Subcommittee is the most active of, of all of those in terms of helping to guide the So, um, and that subcommittee is Michael Baroff, Lori, Janine Jackson, and Deepa Subramaniam, and Tropical Farm. Um, and so that group is kind of helping guide this, this project. Any questions about the City Hall mural project? Okay. Uh, so next. A little, if I may, a little quick comment. Sorry. Yes. I mean, well, I think it's moving really well, and actually, personally and candidly, I feel in the set and over time, my original concern that this was going to be very politicized. I have a, a strong sense that that's been diffused or minimized, and there's more of a collaborative people actually engaging in the process for a for a for the good of the whole situation. So I'm just acknowledging what was. I had a concern or a, an image, but I think we're, it's gotten away from that, you know, thanks to everyone's work. So I think it's good. Yeah. Yeah. We seem to be on a, on a good path forward, um, for sure. And it's a really complex issue. Um, there's going to be a lot of, uh, moments along the path, um, that are going to be challenging. Um, uh, but I think we need to go that with eyes wide open. That when you tackle these complex issues, that that's what you need to be prepared for. Um, okay, oh, so this, happy to hear it. Sorry. Um, so next up is Art of Recovery, and that project is continuing. We now have our production partners in place, which are a number of business districts and other. Um, arts groups in town and in the region that can help us see these projects moving forward. It's taken us a long time to get this set up, but we're really hoping that now that it is, we'll be pretty nimble and able to move quickly. Uh, we have a new project that's just been being installed this week. It's on Montana Avenue, and they have over the course of 10 blocks um, custom tree lighting, a different lighting design um, each block over 10 blocks. And so it's being installed over the past week um, plus. It's continuing to be installed. Uh, we'll be having a, um, distributing a press release about that uh, coming forward or moving forward and really encourage you. It's a great opportunity to go and walk the distance on Montana and get a bite to eat, get a, um, get a massage, get a mani-pedi, um, anything you need. Um, Really trying to encourage again foot traffic. Um, but that's kind of our newest project. There will be a couple other projects un unveiled in the coming weeks um, and months. And I think that um, we also have done um, kind of a closeout survey with our first round of um, projects that we funded over the past year and a half. And at our June meeting, we plan to do a really comprehensive report out for all of you about Art of Recovery and the impacts and the projects um, that have been supported and the number of artists impacted, the number of community members impacted, et cetera. So that's a preview of what's coming um, in, in June as a kind of final report for the first cycle of Art of Recovery as we get moving on our next cycle. Um, any questions about Art of Recovery? Okay. So last up is um, <clears throat> future of meetings. So the city council is meeting back, is starting to meet back fully in person um, in April 12th. And they are moving towards boards and commissions meeting back in person as well. And so we're looking at um, the possibility, possibility of our June meeting being back in person. Um, and the, the one caveat to that, or one of the caveats to that, is um, the location where we used to meet, the Ken Edward Center, may not be available. So we would need to find another location, um, have to coordinate that with other commissions that might be meeting on the same date. But, and I asked this of the PAC, the Public Art Committee, I, my sense is that people want to be back meeting in person. 
um, especially given all of our tech difficulties. Um, and so if you have a big, strong feeling one way or the other, please speak up or email me. Um, but our assumption is, is that this group really would prefer to meet in person finally than two years. I see some nodding heads. Absolutely. And Shannon, I have a clarification. Um, I may be uh, mistaken, but I thought starting in June, monthly meetings were going to resume. Is that not the case? Uh, starting in July, um, in after July. the end of the fiscal year, was when um, the council, I think in the last meeting, I would need to go back and check, but I'm I'm thinking that they may start back monthly in July. So then if we do meet in June, then in a sense, starting in June, we would in a, hopefully be back to monthly meetings, is, or maybe. Listen, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. thank yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, we, I think we've all gotten used to, um, we'll see. Yeah. Rolling I, I, with it, yeah. Yeah, I think the current directive is quarterly through the end of the fiscal year, which, and after that is, Kind of right. no specific direction, but we could go back to the default at that point. Got it. Yeah. And well, and we still don't have our our June date yet, right? Correct. Right. That's the other thing is is the city just last week designated two new city holidays, uh, Cesar Chavez Day, which is this coming Monday, and Juneteenth, which uh, this year will be recognized on the third Monday in June, um, which is the date of our June meeting. So we'll need to um, reschedule our June meeting. Typically what we do when we reschedule um, meetings the holidays is we make them the next Monday, um, but we'll send out an email to y'all uh, to check on availability for that uh, rescheduling. Very good. Thank you so much. It's, um, it's a long night, but... Um... If there's anyone who has any announcements or wants to um, share with us any amazing exhibits they've seen or things that you're personally doing, um, we're going to start doing that. It's uh, something my, Michael Baroff had uh, suggested that we start kind of like um, sharing with each other anything. So um, if anyone wants to uh, tell us what they're up to or what they've seen or what they might like to see. Please, this is your forum. Well, because you mentioned my name attached to that, I guess I'll have to go first. You have to. <laughs> In the context, I mean, I've been going out to performances, theaters. I mean, a couple of things at the Broad stage here in Santa Monica. I went to a wonderful chamber music um, concert um, on Second Street, the group called Kaleidoscope. It's a wonderful um um, conductorless orchestra, wonderful young people and others, you know, playing all sorts of classical music. Gone to the Geffen and downtown, T took the expo downtown, you know, to to um, um, the Mark Taper, saw Blade play there, saw um, Power of Sale at the Geffen and um, Epigenia and, um, and last week, the wonderful at the, at the Broad, they have a series of um, G National Geographic presentations with wonderful photographers. I learned all about insects and parasites. Fascinating. <laughs> so some of that. So it's, I'm I'm feeling comfortable getting out there is my message. So come join Thanks. us. <laughs> Good to you. Anybody else? Go ahead. Go ahead, um, Mary. I'll chime in. Um, I accepted a new position as head of government and community affairs at the Getty. So I've been there for a few months. Um, so that's why. Excellent. Congratulations. Congratulations. You all like that. Um, they just opened at the Getty Center, my office at the Getty Center, but I over, I, I do government affairs for both museums, plus the research institute and the uh, conservation institute. So the Getty Center just had about two weeks ago, uh, Pustan and the Dance opened. Um, a couple of weeks ago, an exhibit that incorporates, you know, his passion and the way he did a lot of work around dance. And so it incorporates modern dancers from Los Angeles, choreographers and their work into the exhibition. So it's kind of interesting with through videography, if anybody is interested in that. 
And April 5th, um, the Getty Villa opens um, a new exhibit on Persia. If, as you're continuing to get out there, there's two other options. Yeah, I'll be at the Getty on Saturday. Great. <laughs> Congrats, Mary Elizabeth. 